I'm a super judge and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? <laughs> you know, it's called daily bread. It's not weekly bread. It's called daily bread. So don't get tired or uh, used to calling it and it doesn't make meaning in your mind anymore. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, you release your faith every day because you are responding to the command of Jesus. Praise God. So are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you. Your spirit is here with us. And even right now, every burden is being lifted. Every yoke is being destroyed by the truth of your word coming right now. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So I see salvation coming to those listening and, and, and watching right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. I began sharing with you yesterday about the walking of the word, the walking of the word in us or how the word of God works in us. Praise God. And I'll share with you from Acts chapter 20 and verse 22. And Paul speaking says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Let me read this from the Amplified Translation. It says, And now, brethren, Acts 20, 20, 32, And now, brethren, I commit you to God. I deposit you to his charge. Hallelujah. I deposit you to his charge, entrusting you to his protection and care. And I commend you to the word of his grace. To the commands, now this is the word of this, what it means by the word of his grace. To the commands and counsels and promises of his unmerited favor. It is able to build you up and to give you your rightful inheritance. I love it when it says your rightful inheritance, just like what we do every day on this broadcast, asking God for your daily bread. It is your rightful inheritance. It's not something you are begging God to do for you. No, 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 no. It is taking what is yours from God. Hmm. Jesus was right when he says, give us this day. Ah, he didn't say, give us this day, Lord, daily bread. No, no, no. He says, ah, daily bread. Ah, daily bread. See? So he says, he says it's, it is able to build you up and to give you your rightful inheritance among all God's set apart ones. Those consecrated, purified, and transformed of souls. See, what's it talking about? Sanctified, those who are sanctified. And how does this sanctification take place? By the word of God. So when the word of God begins to come to you, meaning if the word of God doesn't come to you, you are not sanctified. You're not sanctified because you belong to a certain church. You're not sanctified because you work with certain pastors. No, sir. It is the word of God, number one. Number two, it is he himself that does the sanctification. You don't do the sanctification by yourself. You don't use scriptures and tell yourself, by these scriptures, I am sanctified. You know, sometimes we do this thing, say, I want to read all the scriptures that talks about sanctification. And then you finish reading there and start quoting 
quoting them and quoting them. You're not saying by that you are sanctified. No, sir. No. You are sanctified when the word of God comes to you from his mouth. Number one. Number two, when you respond to that word. You see, the word of God comes. Now, when you respond to it, it puts you in a corner. Now, that corner that the word of God puts, everyone who lives by the word can have, can, should, should know this experience. The moment the word of God comes to you and you begin to respond to it, it begins to box you in a corner. See, now when I say box in a corner, so it's, not a, so it's, not a, it's not a friendly term that we use on a daily you know, normal time. No, it's not a normal time we use for something good. Say, I don't like to be to be boxed in a corner. But you see, that's what the word of God does. It boxes you in a corner. Now, what corner? That narrow corner, praise God. Jesus said, narrow is the way that leads to life. You see, that, that corner, and the beauty of that corner is, you don't need anything more than that corner to operate your world and to change the whole world. Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. So the word of God puts you in that narrow spot. And the good thing about it is this. You begin to reason in a particular way. And you see this kind of reasoning. Now let me read something to you in Romans. Romans, Romans, Romans. Romans is just after the book of Acts. Romans chapter 12. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Yeah, and it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Did you see that? Now he says, don't be. Now once he says, don't be, he's telling you to use your willpower. If he says, don't do something, he's telling you, use your willpower and go against that thing. If he says, do something, he's saying, use your willpower to do that thing, to go for that thing. Now, he says, don't be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way you can be transformed is when your mind is renewed. Now, I was talking to you about sanctification. The way the word of God sanctifies you is this. He sends his word to you. And then as you respond to that word, that word puts you in a corner. For example, now, you see, everybody's stealing around you. Maybe in your office where you work and everybody is stealing and, and, and making some kind of progress by their stealing, by their deals. You know, they will agree that they are stealing. You see, they will tell you they are taking what, what is theirs. You see, but, but you know what it is. You know, that's not how it is done. You know, that's not legal because if they are caught, if someone blows the whistle, they all get into trouble. Now you are boxed in a corner where you can't do it. You see everybody doing it. And sometimes you are tempted to do it. But in the reality, you know you can't do it. Now, that's what I mean being boxed in the corner. They say, why can't you do it? Now, now it, it depends what's on your mind at that point. What's your reason? You know, someone will say, ah, my pastor here, I did this kind of thing. Yeah, I'm finished. Or if, if, ah, if, if somebody now goes to tell them in church that this is what I do. I'm finished. But you know, even today, some people are so bold to do evil. And they don't mind. I heard of a case where two, two, two parish pastors in the same ministry organization were fighting over some government money that they wanted to steal. I'm telling you, that both of them were at loggerheads against each other as to who is supposed to take that money. And the senior pastor heard about it and called it. Now, these were two parish pastors. They, 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 they pastor two different, um, the same um, church organization, but two different branches. And the general overseer called them together and said, what's this I hear? And they were bold enough to tell him, sir, this is not church matter. <laughs> this is our private business matter. See? And, and they, they felt, I mean, we, we, we are righteous to do what we're doing. Not only were they stealing, they were fighting one another. True life story. 
And actually, the fight is still on even as we speak today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, you, you find out that you can't do that. You can't even think about it. Why? Because the word of God has sanctified you. So your reason should not be because of your pastor. Your reason should not be because of other brethren. Your reason should be because of the knowledge of the word of God that you have. I, I can't steal. It's so difficult. I'm telling you personally now. It's so difficult. I can't even imagine it. Why? You see, because my, my mindset over time has been built up. See, that's what he says. Which is able to build you up. Build you up. So you realize that by, by reason of what you know from the word of God. And how do you get to know those things? Through fellowship. So now I understand perfectly that my God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I understand that not because Paul quoted it. I understand that because I have become the fulfillment of what Paul said. See? See that that is the thing. We are sanctified to be the word those who fulfill the word. So, and you, you have difficulty now and you're looking for money. And then there's this opportunity to steal. And then you look at it and says, nah, I've got, how, how do I even start? How do I start? I'm going to put my faith to work and I'll get this thing. This same thing I'm being tempted to steal. I'll put my faith to work and I'll get it. I'll turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I need this thing. And then his word will come to me consigning it. And then the result will come. I'll get it. So why should I steal? That's what I mean being boxed in a corner. By the things that you know and you have received from him. Now this is not, you see, we make this mistake sometimes. Thinking, quoting and declaring and confessing will do the job. No, sir. Sometimes you think, oh, study and having plenty of scriptures in your mind will do the job. No, sir. There are people who quote the word of God so perfectly, yet they are still doing every wrong thing that you can think about. What's going on? They have not been sanctified. They have not been boxed into that corner. They have not been boxed into that. I can never wake up today and say, I'm going to look for money. I can't. See, it's, it's been disabled in me, you know, to wake up and, and start running around and thinking of what to do. Oh, I have this bill. I have to go around. I have to look for money. You know, like they say, I have to hustle to get things done. No, it's been disabled in me. Why? Because I have been sanctified. How did I get sanctified? By the word of his grace. It has built me up. Now, the way you know the word of God is building you up is when it begins to affect your mind. Get me. I didn't say your spirit. I said when it begins to affect your mind. We talked about this last week. How do you know the word of God is affecting your mind? When it becomes the restraining force in every decision you make. You want to consider something and, and suddenly you said, no. The word of God will not let me do this. Ah, no, nah, I can't. The word of God will not allow me to do this. And, and you're not looking at religion. See, you must get this clear. There is a difference between religion and the word of God. Religion will only restrain you for a while. Until one day you realize that even the pastor used to do some little, little iniquities. And I say, ah, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine the person I'm afraid of is even not so righteous after all? And then you all, every restraining force in your life is broken. And then you go wild and do everything you need to do. You have not been built up. You were only practicing religion. You are built up when the word of God enters into you. 
and now begins to control your decision making. See, every decision you make in life, every day, every minute, every second, there is the word of God that is there as a measure and as a restraining power. And I pray that that restraining force from God's word is getting stronger in your life today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Go out today and be blessed. Amen. Bye-bye.